Welcome back to the bench, everybody. We are done. The 148 scale Tamiya F4 F4 Wildcat is complete. This was a great kit. Um, kind of want to go through a couple of things. Uh, first of all, this was the kit. How much did I pay? I paid uh, 26 at the local hobby shop. Get that out of the way. And yeah, let's just start from the top. The kit comes on two sprues. Pretty simple. And one for your canopies. Comes with a decal sheet. Obviously, I used some. And some poly caps for the propeller. The instructions are your standard uh, Tamiya instructions. Pretty straightforward. You know, nothing uh, confusing. Really straightforward. Uh, anybody that's done a Tamiya kit will know they're top tier. Um, how did it go together though? I would say very, very minimal sanding. The sanding I did was right here for the fuselage join right here. And right here at the back the wings there are basically this whole bottom section so the bottom part of the wings is one piece and then those were two pieces of the wings I didn't get them quite perfect if you look down straight dead on you can see that it is <clears throat> a little cockeyed but very hard to notice so yeah really went together straightforward it did come with drop tanks I did prime them and gloss them but I decided I kind of liked the look uh, unloaded so I'll keep these don't know what I'll do with them you know who knows in the future what you may do with them um, first off let's go over some mistakes I made during the build. As far as putting it together goes, I did <laughs> as as careful as I tried to be, and I'm always thinking about it. Pedo tubes are not my friend. I put this one on the side right here. I did break it off once, and so I actually didn't put this... Um, little uh, control arm I guess I'm not exactly sure what it's called somebody can correct me I actually put that on tonight right before the final mask um, because I knew I would break it off the decals I definitely messed them up um, but I am going for a more weathered wildcat so I decided to make them work. Um, I'm not sure if it does, um, if it looks worn or if it just looks like uh, ripped decals. This one kind of does because it looks weird. Um, I'll let you guys be the judge of that. As far as this model goes on it in its entirety though, probably one of the more satisfying ones I've done at the end. Um, I did, let's see, if you notice there, um, I painted the engine and the propeller separate and this engine cowling here and I glued them on at the end for the final mask. Uh, I used super glue, I basically put it on and I had it like this straight up and down just so that it kind of let gravity do it and I went and did some other things and came back to it. And yeah, I guess I didn't 
it didn't fit as tight in there as I wanted, so it is crooked, but I can kind of hide it just by, you know, just don't look dead on. Um, the cockpit, I decided to leave open since this kit does not come with a pilot. So, you know, in the future, if I wanted to do like a little diorama, you know, you could have your pilot standing there. Uh, I also have not done a model yet with the cockpit open. It is kind of small, so you can't see in there too much. Um, the cockpit was pretty nice and detailed. Um, so all in all, as far as the build goes, I don't think I'm, you know, as far as a Tamiya kit goes, it's exactly what you'd think. It goes together great. Very, very minimal extra work. Just, you know, the initial sanding to get rid of the fuselage join and the wing joins just so you don't see the line there and that's really the only problems I had besides breaking off this pedo tube which is alright as it is back on painting as far as painting goes I used Vallejo primer for the cockpit and then just your Tamiya XF4 yellow green to give it that zinc chromate look. Um, as far as priming the whole plane, I used Mr. Servicer Aqueous. This is probably my favorite stuff I've tried. It's extremely durable, dries really fast, and it adheres well. And it's more of a semi, I don't know if you can call it a primer. A, a gloss or matte. Usually they're matte. This almost dries more like uh, in between. Um, that's why I get this 1000. They do make a 500 if you want a more rough matte look. Um, paints. Um, so I primed it. I glossed it black with Tamiya X1. And then I painted around um, the, the cockpit here and kind of across the top here and then the front of the engine cowling as well as these silver bits this Vallejo metal color and then let's see uh, Grumman used their own primer color instead of this zinc chromate so they primed theirs uh, this is a light gold gray by Vallejo but this is the actual federal standard color that it was. So I, after I painted the metal, I did chip it with uh, their chipping medium. Got that metal look going around there. And then I did a, a gloss coat. Um, to me is gloss X22. Next, I did this. Did another round of chipping medium and then we did the top coat this Vallejo faded PRU blue and then I chipped that so you do get bits of metal like shiny and primer just to kind of give it a little extra detail um, then I put the decals on I just used you know, micro set, micro saw. This stuff works really well. Uh, I am curious of more of a one part system, but it worked really well for me. After decals, oh, I also did the uh, bottom of the uh, cat here, Insignia White. That is also a federal standard color. I don't know if this is, it doesn't have it on there. But this was the kind of, I like that lighter blue look that earlier uh, in the war that they were painting. Um, and I weathered the whole thing. Oops, hit my light. I weathered the whole thing with streaking grime. And then I took off as much as I wanted till it looked a little more natural. And then I kind of did some more detailing with this weathering master. Um... Mostly this oil stain color. That's how I got these uh, faded gun marks. Um, and that's about it. Um, I would say 
of all the kits I've built, this one really gave me minimal frustration. And it really was a good time. I didn't really have to fix anything minus this tube. And I think as far as this is kind of the first one I've really tried to weather, I think it turned out really good. Um, I did want to show all this stuff just so you can see kind of what goes into it. Um, I do watch a lot of videos. I like seeing other work people do. And sometimes I am curious as to how, you know, they got certain effects. So yeah, this is basically everything that went into this kit. Obviously, there's some glue and stuff. Uh, you know, use whatever glue you like. But yeah, guys. Um, I'm not sure what we'll be doing next. Part of me, I, I, I did just complete a Japanese plane, the KI-61 or Ki-61, however you want to say it. So... Part of me wants to leave World War II for, for a model. Maybe do that. Uh, I, I'm either going to do an F5E um, or that MIG. I do have a F18, uh, but part of me isn't sure if I want to start that one yet as it is going to be a more in-depth build. Um, most likely it's going to be that, uh, MiG-21 from Academy. It's a 172. It'll be a, a, a more quick project. Um, but yeah, as far as, uh, this Wildcat goes, I've really enjoyed this build. If anybody enjoys Wildcats and they haven't done this to me a kit yet, I would highly recommend it. Um, so yeah, guys, um. Let me know if you guys have done this kit before and your thoughts on it. Um, but yeah, hopefully everybody else's projects are going well. And we'll see you in the next one. We'll, uh, we'll announce which ones I'm starting next.